Um, if you feel, you wanna sit down on the floor, you wanna stretch out your legs, and you know, relax a little bit, feel free to do so. Um, all right, so again, with Christmas in the year just within our reach, are your freelancing goals ready for 2019? I'm not sure if all our freelancers here, some are maybe new freelancers, some may are probably planning to be freelancers, so either or, you're welcome here, and I'm sure you'll be able to learn a lot and you'll plan ahead for your freelancing goals for the next year. So if your skill doesn't help start the year right, this workshop is the perfect match for you. With that in mind, welcome to PayPal's workshop, Smart Money Moves, How to Grow Your Finance Career in 2019. So first, um, feel free to post on your social media pages. Please tag PayPal Freelancer, use the hashtag PayPal Freelancer and tag PayPal Philippines. Later on in the, in the program, we'll have an activity and um, what we, have, we will give, be giving away a few special prizes to, to some people who will be you know, participating in our activities. Also, don't miss the latest updates on workshops like this and other exciting news from PayPal by liking our official Facebook page, which is PayPal Philippines. And please, please join our official Facebook group, which is PayPal Philippines Freelancer Community. If you don't have a PayPal account yet, please sign up. Uh, go to paypal.com slash ph or you can you can just approach any of our um, event staff there joanna or manel and they'll be happy to assist you in your sign in signing up all right so i won't make you wait any longer i want to introduce you your paypal freelancer mentor for the day so from civil engineer to registered financial planner our paypal freelancer mentor is a known entrepreneur investor and financial pl planner in the country his blog ready to be rich is a multi-awarded financing blog that helps Filipinos manage their business. Outside his field of work, he's a resource speaker actively promoting entrepreneurship and financial literacy. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Fitz Bideferte. Hello, good afternoon. So, let me check my paper. So, I write, okay. So, I'd like to welcome you all the surprise ako, marami sign-ups. I think one week lang natin to <laughs> um, pre-remote. No? So, again, good afternoon. Huwag kayong mabubulag dun sa picture ko kanina na ginamit sa poster. Tagal na natin. Eight years na po kayo. Kayo ang stalker kayo sa ano po, ha, Facebook ko. So, yeah. So, this is uh, more recent. Uh, two years ago, my my brother got married, so it's ako sa mga amin. So that's a more recent picture. So again, I'm a registered financial planner. So yun talaga yung uh, trabaho ko. Uh, what's a registered financial planner? If you are, pag may sakit ka sa katawan, you go to a doctor. Pag yung bulsa mo yung may sakit, you go to a registered financial planner. So it's a relatively new profession uh, in the Philippines. And uh, aside from that, I'm also a co-founder of uh, a freelance marketplace, so 199jobs.com. So, para siyang classified ads, pero ang mga nakalista lang dyan ay mga short-term, fast-cycle jobs. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Kaya siya 199jobs kasi yung mga, mga trabaho dyan, it starts at 199 pesos only. So, usually, mga simple task lang. So, if you're a freelancer, you can find short fast cycle jobs there but if you're a freelancer trying to grow a business and looking to outsource some of the tasks that you do we can also find people there so anyway uh what are we going to learn Ay, mali yate, na ko. Sige. Okay. Ayan, okay, okay. yeah so what are you going to learn uh, this afternoon. So, we divide to into three parts. The first part is ending the year, right? So, basically learning from the year that was. Then, we move on to how do we make the new year better. So, I will I will focus on productivity. And the last part is making 2019 your best year ever. So, this is preparing for um, new opportunities to make your freelancing career and freelancing business better, okay? So, if there's one thing that I want you to remember this afternoon, ito siguro, no? You can't manage and improve what you don't analyze and measure. 
So I am very geeky when it when it comes to finances and productivity. No, siguro kaya ako lang yung register financial plan kasi I like numbers because when you measure numbers, concrete siya, di ba? It's a fact. And if you want to improve what you're doing, I always try to find a way to measure it in uh, concretely with numbers. So it's also the same for you. So you can't manage and improve, but you don't analyze and measure. So hindi pwede yung kutub-kutub lang na I'm doing better, I'm doing okay. Dapat meron kang basis. And when it comes to the first part, which is ending your year, ending the year, right? As a financial planner, I want you to focus on your cash flow. So assess your cash flow to determine the big wins and the avoidable losses you had for the year. So as the year ends, and usually I do this during this time, kasi pagdating ng December, busy na sa mga parties, gatherings, reunions. Usually towards the third and fourth week of November, it's a great time to reflect upon the year that was. And when it comes to your personal finance, it's good to assess your cash flow, particularly your freelancing income. Ano ba yung mga clients ko? Sino yung mga clients ko na nagpinisa ka ng pinakamalaking projects? Ano yung mga mistakes ko sa mga gasos ko na sana ay na-avoid ko? So, simply you have to ask yourself, how much did you earn each month? How much did you spend each month? And how much is the difference? So, this is a sample uh, uh, plotting of your cash flow. So, in blue, yun yung income mo. Yung orange, yun yung expenses. So, I hope you are tracking your spending no? and your income. So, this is not possible if you don't track your expenses. So, of course, if you don't actively track your expenses, you can just estimate you can base it on magkano yung mga credit card bills niyo, magkano yung mga utility bills niyo. You can add them up and then you can have this plan. Ngayon, ano yung important dito sa paggawa nito? So actually, ginawa ko January to December. Uh, of course, towards the end of the year, meron na kayo data for November and December. The first is you have to Pinpoint, ano ba yung mga months na mas mataas yung expenses ko kaysa sa kinita ko? Diba? So in this case, June, July, August, and December. Uh, this is actually, a, this is an actual cash flow pala nung isa kong kahilala na freelancer na lang pa financial consultation sa akin. So ito yung isa sa mga ginawa namin. So why do you think mat 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 mataas yung expenses niya pag June, July, and August? Enrollment ng anak meron pa when sabi niya pag June, July, August wala daw masyadong project tama ba? sino ba mga freelancers sa dito? Okay. pag June, July, August matuman ng project ano kasi eh sa akin yung long term ah mga long term projects sino pa yung isa? Um, not necessary not necessary meron na akong contract so depende siguro sa industry yung yung uh, friend ko is a graphic designer so sabi niya Usually, matubal sa kanya yung June, July, tapos August, enrollment na nung anak niya. So, pag December, expected kasi ang dami gastos pag holiday season. So, the second thing that you can look here, yan, dinagdag ko na lang, siyempre, meron kang average expense. I don't know if you can see the orange line. You can also now determine, ano ba yung mga months na more, uh, yung expenses nyo is greater than the average expense that you have. So, dinagyan ko ng araw doon sa taas. So, this, those are May, June, and December. So, aside from the expenses, you can also look at your income. Particularly, yung average income, ay, ay, okay. Yan. So, ano yung, yung mga months na yung average income, yung income mo is less than the average income? So again, I don't know if you can see the very light blue na line. Yun yung average income. So there are a lot of months na less than the average yung income nyo. Which means, yung mga kinikita mo na January, November, and December, sila yung nagpupuno ng mga, mga kakulangan mo dun sa mga ibang months, no? including April and May. So 
you can either find, ask yourself, bakit ang laki ng kinikita ko during those months? Or, ano yung pwede mong gawin para itaas ko pa yung mga buwan na medyo mapapa? So, particularly, ano yung mga questions na kailangan mong uh, sabutin, no? In our example, when you are assessing, assessing your cash flow for the past year or past years, you can find, find you should find ways to lower expenses. Prioritize on the months of June and December, tapos followed by May, July, and August. So, if we go back, ay, nahihirapan sa mga ano? So, kung kumalik sa previous slide. Yan. So, kung kumasin sa expenses, yung June at saka yung December, yun yung dalawa yung down arrow. So, kaya ako sinabi na you have you, you should focus on uh, those months kasi yun yung particularly may issue pagdating sa expenses ninyo. So, hindi na gumaganin na. Okay, they just say next? Yes, yes. Alright. So, next. Yan. So, other than that, think of ways to make more money during February, March, June, July. These are the months na yung average, uh, yung, yung income ninyo is less than the average income. So, sometimes you have to ask yourself, bakit ba wala akong masyadong income dyan? And sabi ng friend ko, usually meron na siyang long-term project, nakafocus siya dun sa paggawa niya ng project, and hindi siya nagkahanap ng bagong clients. So, medyo mababa. Ang maganda, bakit mataas yung January niya? Sabi niya kasi when, you, he usually gets new clients. Meron siya parang initial na payment. Parang uh, ito yung unang bayad. Tapos meron na na siyang retainer. Tapos masyado siya nabibisi dun sa monthly maintenance na retainer na lang yung kinikita niya. Kaya umababa yung income niya. So the point is, uh, my friend, and what you should also do, uh, you should take the time to study yung cash flow ninyo. You understand? Na, ano ba yung... Kasi yung iba, basta trabaho lang trabaho, kumikita, tapos diyan tayo lang nila, tipili niya sarili nila para mag-lower expenses. But, it's always better to see ano yung mga factors, ano yung mga reason kung bakit ganun yung cash flow natin. Minsan, you will discover and realize some insight that could actually help us improve our finances. Uh, next. So, when it comes to our expenses, you can you can recall the money mistakes you made, identify expense issues you had, and how can you avoid or minimize them. Okay, next. But the things that your expenses, nyo, it's always good to streamline it. And when I say streamlining, the first step is really to list down all your expenses. Ang favorite ko dyan, especially sa grocery, no, I always keep the receipt. No? So, you take receipt ko, it's a great way for you to determine ano ba yung mga daging kong binibili sa grocery. And I can actually label them ano ba yung mga essential, ano ba mga, mga, mga non-essential dito. And sometimes, ako alam ko na, isa sa mga non-essential expenses ko, yung mga chichirya. No? So, kasi pag titinaw yung take receipt ko, alam ko na kung ano yung mga non-essential dito. And, because I'm now more conscious of it, if I know that I should be more, uh, I should spend less this month, alam ko na na hindi ako dadaan dun sa snack aisle pag nag-grocery ako. Kasi, natitempa ko kumuha ng chichirya. So, kasi that's part of my non-essential expenses. Also, it's good to determine ano ba yung mga fixed costs and variable costs ninyo. Next, please. So, pag sinabi yung fixed costs, ito yung hindi nagbabago every month yung bayad. So, examples are yung rent or mortgage, tapos yung internet subscription ninyo or mobile yung uh, postpaid na nyo sa cellphone and other subscriptions. Pag sinabi yung variable cost, of course, food and groceries, transportation, and entertainment expenses. Next, please. So, the key really is to eliminate, minimize, downgrade non-essential expenses. So, yung sa kong friend, nakasubscribe siya sa Netflix. 
tinanong ko siya, ilan ba yung gumagamit ng Netflix? Sabi niya, well, ako lang naman, pamisan-misan yung kapatid ko. Pero yung plan niya sa Netflix, I, I'm not sure, yung parang premium na pwedeng up to 5 users, parang ganyan. Sabi, bakit yan yung ano? Hindi ko alam eh, kasi nung nag-sign up ako, nag-check-check lang ako, tapos hindi na binabayaran ko. Actually, mayroong mura na account ng one user lang, I think that's around 300. A month? Parang ganyan. Ang gusto kasi hindi ako Netflix subscriber. Pero kung nagamit ko yung account ng Netflix ng tatay ko. So, diba? Libre. So, anyway. So, yun, no? You study your expenses. You can, you should find more affordable alternatives for essential expenses. So, affordable alternatives. So, may taga-globe ba dito? Wala. Uh, what I'm, I, I'm saying is, I'm actually a Globe subscriber, a Globe postpaid. I have a Globe postpaid plan. I've had that for more than 10 years. So what I do, di ba meron silang recontracting na every two years? I don't, I don't actually subscribe to that anymore. Meron silang mga, may mga plans sila na every six months, la, eh, six months lang yung lockout. One of the reasons why I do that, kasi ang Globe, parang every so often, nag-iiba-iba yung plan nila. May, so, may low post paid plan subscriber ba dito? Uh, di ba? Malaki sa may promo, may bagong bundle, etc. So ako, I make it a... I make it a... Uh, I make sure na every so often, I review my post paid plan kasi minsan may mga bundle na... Uh, would you believe na last year, what I remember, 7 gig a month yung data allocation ko. Pero ngayon, 13 gig na. With any... without... Uh, paying extra. Bakit? Kasi dami na promo. May mga free... Yung, yung dati na meron silang 1 gig free uh, sa Facebook. Ganyan. Ngayon, sabi ko, pwede na palang yung mga package na kahit na free gig yung libre ko sa data allocation ko sa Facebook. Kasi malakas ako ng Facebook. So, so something like that. Also, it's, you can find a for, affordable alternatives for essential expenses. So, the, uh, a cell phone is an essential expense for me. So it's something that I am conscious of. Next, please. So target and focus on dealing with your worst budget offenders. For me, my worst budget offender is food. Yeah, because I'm also food. Always na ba, no? So, sa akin, I make sure na yung budget ko for eating out is I don't try to eat in places na alam ko magko-overspend ako sa budget ko. So, that's that's it, no? And always shop with the list and never do your groceries when hungry. So, this is one thing. Kaya ako siya siner specifically is because a lot of my friends usually yan na yung sinasabi ko sa kanila. Tayo mo lang mag-grocery ng may listahan at huwag kang mag-grocery ng puso. Anong nang buto. Sabi nila, it actually help them reduce their spending when they are in the grocery. And alam mo yun, it's always a start, a small start that can actually inspire you to do more and look at the other things that you do. Particularly, being aware of your own impulse buying habits and to avoid unnecessary spending. Okay? Next. So ano ba yung spending priority natin? It's always... Good to remember na when you receive your income, your first priority is saving. So I'll talk more about that. So you have to save first before you spend. Okay? And after saving, the next spending priority is paying for your debts. So kailangan bayad ng utang mo na after mo mag-save. After mo mag-bayad ng kailangan mong bayaran, the next is essential expenses. Okay? Ito yung mga kailangan. And the last na is non-essential expenses, kung may matira pa. Kaya, hindi na masyado obvious, pero the grade at the shake is, becomes lighter. Kasi usually, pagdating sa dulo, wala na siya na pera. But it should be there. And if you budget correctly, there will, you will always have enough money to spend on some luxury or non-essential expenses, which is okay lang naman. Okay, next. So, the first aspect of your cash flow is your expenses. The other side is, of course, your income. And when assessing your cash flow, you also have to ask, "Ano ba yung mga naging best sources of income ko? Ano yung mga sino yung mga 
mga clients ko na talagang sila yung nagbigay sa akin ng pera. And one of the things that you can ask is, is it scalable so I can earn more? Yung mga income sources ko ba o yung mga pinagkakitaan ko as a freelancer this year, uh, pwede ba siyang scale up? Ibig sabihin, pwede ko ba siyang doblehin yung, gina, yung ginawa ko? Pwede ko ba siyang uh, i-duplicate para mas malaking kikitain ko? So, isa sa mga katulad nyo sa friend ko, yung graphic designer, sabi niya, meron siya isang client na na-discover niya, yung ganung klaseng business, kailangan pala nun ng graphic design constantly. So sabi ko sa kanya, why don't you find a similar client and then para hindi ka naman ma-overwhelm sa work, you hire an apprentice graphic designer, ituro mo kung paano mo ginawa yung mga graphics na yun. And then, now, dahil wala kayo ng katrabaho, you earn a little extra, you get two clients do, doing the same thing, di ba? So that's what I mean na, do you, you assess, is, it, is that something scalable? Is that something that I can hire someone to do for me? Diba? And then, ito, it, this is also important. Which of them underperform? So mga income sources niyo. Would it be better to just cut them out or find ways to improve? Okay. Meron kasi akong kakilala, masyado siyang rakitista. What do I mean, no? Meron siyang online freelancing work na nag uh, article writer siya pero offline nagbebenta pa siya ng mga kung ano ano no meron siyang buy and sell ng mga mga damit no na minsan nagfi Facebook live siya ano yun yung parang home TV shopping yun so meron di ba Facebook live na mga nagbebenta siya ng mga items na binibili niya uh, kasi yung kapatid niya nagtatrabaho sa Thailand nagpapadala pa minsan minsan ng mga damit tapos, yung mga damit, pili Facebook Live niya, binibenta niya. So, rocket ngayon. Aside from that, meron pa siyang mga sideline, may part-time job pa siya. So, sabi ko sa kanya, dahil nung ginagawa, uh, pero feeling mo, kulang pa rin yung uh, hinihita mo. Baka kasi, ang problem is, you're doing too much. So, nung in-evaluate in namin, sabi ko sa kanya, doon sa mga ginagawa mo, ano yung pinakamaligit, saan ka pinakakonti ang kinikita? Eh, sabi niya, yung sa damit daw, pero kasi ini-enjoy daw niya na nagbibenta sa nabi Facebook lang siya ng mga damit. Pero nalit lang doon ang kinikita niya doon. So, sabi sa kanya, would it be, would you be okay na hindi mo na lang siya gawin? Kasi the time that you spend doing that, you could actually just spend finding more clients for your article writing or, alam yun, finding a new income source. So, nag-isip siya, at first, hesitant siya kasi nga, ini-enjoy niya. Di ba? So, sabi ko sa kanya, I'm sure you can find something else that you can enjoy doing, uh, you can enjoy as much doing, but it can uh, actually help you earn more. Di ba? So, nag-iisip siya. Ngayon, nagbibenta pa rin siya, pero nag-Shopify na siya. Alam mo yun, naka-upload na siya doon. Tapos, nag-aral siya kung paano gumawa ng Facebook ads. Merong ano eh, hindi mo basta set-up lang yan as Facebook ads. Meron siyang technique, no? So, yung Shopify store niya, kumikita passively because of the Facebook ads na sinet-up niya, doon na nabibenta. Yung natutunan niya sa pag-set-up ng Facebook ads, isa lang yung siyang bagong service na ino-offer niya sa mga clients niya. I can manage your advertising. Uh, I, I, I'm not familiar with exact term. Diba? So now, mas malaki na yung kinikita niya and hindi na siya, hindi na, feeling niya, hindi na siya masyadong overwhelmed sa mga ginagawa niya kasi a lot of the things that she now does is medyo automated. So but it was not possible kung hindi siya nag-analyze or nag-assess yung ginagawa niya. Ano ba yung mga pinagkakapitaan ko? Baka mayroon dito pwede tanggalin na lang or palitan na lang, no? Or paano ko i-improve yung mga ginagawa ko na uh, kumikita talaga? Paano ko pwede ko bang kaya ko bang doblehin yung kinikita ko dito? Okay, next please. So this is just an example. It's important to have an income target. So let's say you're an online freelance writer at ang rate mo ay 1 peso per word. Meron bang freelance writer dito? Wala. Ayan. Sir, makano ang per word ninyo? Ano ko? 
Uh, $20 per article. Ilang words yun? 500 words. 500 words to $20. So more or less, mga 2 pesos per... Roughly. Yeah. Oh, roughly. Okay. So, uh, yung friend ko, actually, sa kanya, uh, since uh, he's just starting, ang rate niya mga piso per word. Tapos, nakalculate niya na kailangan niya ng 15,000 pesos a month para makover yung uh, essential expenses niya. So, sabi ko sa kanya, instead of you thinking na kailangan ko kumita ng 15,000 pesos a month, bakit hindi mo palitan yung mindset mo? Kailangan kong magsulat ng 15,000 words this month. Nag-gets nyo? It's a change of perspective. Uh, next. So, pag meron kang target na 15,000 words, mas madali siyang i-concretize. So, yung 15,000 words, that means siguro 2,500 word articles plus a... 5,000 word ebook project, di ba? So, 500 word na article, hanap ka lang ng 20 articles na pwede mo isulat na gano'n. Tapos maghanap ka lang isang client na magpapasulat sa'yo ng ebook for 5,000 words. So, or choose any combination. Now, it's now easier for you to find a client. Di ba? It's just a change in perspective or mindset. So, now find clients that can help you achieve your income target. Uh, yung 15,000 words is also equal to 3 e-books, di ba? Ang isang e-book is 5,000 words. Tapos, that's also equivalent to 3 e-books. If yun yung gusto mong gawin, you can actually go to internet marketing groups or forums and then offer your services there. I can write an e-book for you for 5,000 pesos or uh, for $100. I can write an e-book for you that you can use for internet marketing or affiliate marketing, or whatever you're doing online, whatever business you're doing online. And your friend ko, um, regularly receives two to three ebook writing projects a week. So, alam mo yun, uh, nadalapasan niya yung income target niya, pero the reason bakit na nagawa yun, what help, is yung tinulungan ko siyang exchange yung perspective. Kasi dati, nag-isip siya, kasi ba ako kukuha ng project para kumita ng 15,000 pesos ka ba? Diba? Very vague. Ngayon, I changed the perspective na ito actually yung kailangan mong gawin. Kailangan mong hanap ng kliyente na ito yung ipapagawa sa'yo. So, mas madali niyang nahanap yung uh, goal niya. Next, please. So, when it comes to your cash flow, your income, your expenses, uh, para sa akin, particularly, ah, uh, uh, I use PayPal for my online transactions because meron siyang downloadable expense in income history. Especially ako, minsan, no, wala na sisip ko pag meron akong impulse buy online. So it's it's good na uh, PayPal ang namin ko kasi I can always track it. And there's a quick view of your online spending. Ito yung isa pa, isa pa sa mga gusto ko kasi meron kang easy access to a list of your sources of income and yung fast check of clients who pay online. I have uh, uh, international clients who outsource uh, personal finance articles sa akin. Kapasulat sila sa akin ng personal finance articles. And I've noticed three clients na pagkasubmit ko sa kanila, within two days, nababayaran ako. Pero meron ako isang client na mas malaki siya magbayad than the others, pero umaabot ng dalawang buwan bago kong bayaran. <laughs> Oo, oh, sabi ko. So, uh, what does that mean for me? So, ang sabi ko sa kanya, doon sa client ko, um, yung rate, ang terms doon is 7 days. Ngayon, I would have to charge you extra if it takes you to up to 2 months before you pay me. Sa kanya. Naintindihan naman niya. So now, ang ginawa niya, uh, kasi daw yung process doon sa company nila, medyo matagal talaga. It takes 2 months. So, uh, she now offered me, yung contact ko, a higher rate for the work that I'm doing for them. I guess mo. Kasi, nahiya siya eh. Tumas nga naman siya bago siya magpahayad. Pero yung original code ko, 7 days lang yung payment terms. No? Ako naman, hindi ko masyadong conscious doon kasi uh, pinapadala ko sila sa, sa, sa PayPal ng invoice, yung ask for payment. So, alam yun, hindi, mamumulit na yun eh, di ba? So, hindi ko na siya inisip. Pero nakita ko, uy, 
itong try tapos dalawang buwan pa lang hindi magbayad ko lagi no so yun uh, so i just want to share something that i uh, do uh, nakatulong sa akin yung data next please okay ba tayo so far yes all okay. so part two so tapos na tayo dun sa pag-evaluate ng ating cash flow for the past year so ito ngayon the second part is a better start for the new year which is for me uh, next please uh, all about improving your productivity so focus on improving your productive productivity because better time and energy management translates to higher income so a lot of people they focus on time management ako i like to emphasize na hindi lang time yung minamanage natin. Dapat yung energy din natin, yung effort din natin. Kasi, maganda man tayong mag-ayos ng schedule natin, pero kunwari, yung gagawin mo sa umaga ay sobrang nakakadrain na ng utak, you will be less productive sa mga next task ninyo. No? So, uh, it's important to do time and energy management. It's not just uh, it's not enough to just know ano bang gagawin ko ngayong araw na to. You have to ask, ito bang mga gagawin ko, kaya ko ba siyang gawin in terms of the, my energy level? Baka naman tatlong mga intense na mga ana analysis yung mga task ko for the whole day. Wala na akong uh, creative juice po dating sa last task ko. Sayang. So usually ako, uh, just to share, uh, evening person kasi ako. Doon nagpipit yung, uh, yung brain activity ko. So what I usually do sa umaga, tanghali, I do my errands. Yun yung mga mechanical kasi hindi ko kailangan mag-isip. So tulog pa yung utak ko, pero ano mo yun, pupunta na ako sa bangko, doon ako nag-grossity, yung mga errands ko. Pagdating sa hapon, then that's when I try to answer my email. So a little bit of thinking already. And yung mga kailangan kong gawin ng deep analysis, mag-aaral mag ng mga uh, as a financial planner, mag-aaral ng mga mga charts, mag-duto mag, uh, ng gagawa ng financial analysis, etc. I do that in the evening. Because that's when I know my peak mental uh, activity is, no? And yung mental productivity ko. So, you can also do the same uh, for you. Next, please. So, improve, your, improve on your productivity. Aside from knowing your your off peak and uh, peak hours when it comes to your energy, you can also do three things. First, you can simplify and automate and outsource and delegate, number two. And lastly, you can scale up and collaborate. Yeah. So, sinadya ko talaga mag-rhyme yung mga last words kasi parang magandang uh, pakinga, no? Simplify and automate, outsource and delegate, scale up and collaborate. Yeah. Next, please. So, when you say simplify and automate, uh, don't be afraid to use online tools and apps. So, of course, ako, super fan ako ng Buffer. No? Uh, it's a social media management app. Um, dati kasi, pwede mag-post yung Buffer sa personal Facebook page. Pero kasi hindi na. Wala na yan. Lang, wala na ngayon. Wala na, di ba? Pero dati, when I was using Buffer, uh, siya yung nagpo-post, i-calendar ko lang sa buffer lahat ng gusto kong i-post sa personal Facebook page ko. And there was a lot of times na yung friend ko, kakusapin ako, isa-chat ako sa Facebook, and usually offline ako. Tapos sasabihin sa akin, so plano, kakapost mo lang sa Facebook, tapos isisin so, uh, hindi mo kapansin yun. So, later on, sasabihin ko, actually, kasi naka-auto-post yun, I was actually offline. And I was offline doing Something else, I use, I'm usually with a financial consultant si client or I'm delivering a talk. Uh, pero, my social media accounts are very active. So, that's because of some of the online tools that I use. Of course, kasama din dyan yung applic uh, app nung banko ninyo. So, I, you can do banking on your own. Ito, you can also use apps to improve how you do personal tasks so well. I don't know, may gawa ka ba ng Trello rito? Trello, yeah. Trello, sana. Yes. So, para sa akin, uh, it's also a very good productivity tool and collaboration tool, no? Kasi I, I have some some uh, staff na pag kasi nakuutusan ko lagi ng utusan sa email, ginagawa ko na lang siya ng task sa Trello namin. Alam niya na na may bago siya kailangan gawin. At hindi ko siya kailangan kulitin, 
magpa-follow up kung ano ba, uh, tapos na or not. No? Kasi nakikita ko na yung progress nito sa task. So it's something na uh, you can also use. And personally, I use the Pomodoro, a Pomodoro timer. Are you familiar with the Pomodoro technique? Yes. Ano na? 8020. 8020. Ano yun? 8020. Well, ako, iba iba kasi, no? Ako, I usually work for 15 minutes, tapos 10 minutes na break. That's, it's just a cycle. That's one Pomodoro. Yung iba kasi, what they do is 25 minutes na work, tapos 5 minutes na, na break. So that's 30 minutes. That's the classic. Ako, 15 minutes, tapos 10 minutes na break. So yung 10 minutes na break, anong ginagawa ko doon? Usually, I uh, go offline. So doon ako kumakain yun. Kumakain ng snack, <laughs> nagsistretching, o oh, well, kumakain talaga, no? Or that's when I, yeah, do some stretching. Usually, pag nasa bahay ako, mainit, that's when I take a quick shower, etc. So, tapos, tumaw for 50 minutes. Uh, intense work ulit yung focus. Tapos, another 10 minutes, yeah, I, I do, I'll find something else to do. Uh, usually, that's also when I take my, my lunch, or etc. So, next please. So, yung PayPal Merchant app, I don't know if you already have it installed so for those who are PayPal users. Sa akin, it's, it has simplified how I manage and move my money. Especially that I have staff na I pay through PayPal. So, it's so easy for me to, to send uh, money sa kanila. Next please. But uh, for me, what has helped me is yung PayPal business account ko. Kasi meron itong merchant tools and this is form. So I have online shops na I don't actually uh, have uh, Shopify. I put up my own website. Tapos yung mga payment, yung mga payment buttons ko, uh, payment, uh, merchant, PayPal button na yung gamit ko dun sa mga buy now buttons ko. No? And of course, yung nasabi ko kanina, I can send out mga invoice and uh, ask for payment through the PayPal business account that I have. Okay. Next. So, improve your productivity and when it comes to outsource and delegation, uh, you can check out yung mga websites na yan, mga onelinejobs.com, of course, that's my website. Uh, there's Fiverr, Upwork, and all the other freelance marketplace websites. So, pwede kayo mag-outsource yung mga mechanical tasks ninyo. Okay, so, like, isa sa, yung sa isa kong kaibigan na meron sa social media management app, uh, business. Uh, meron siyang restaurant na siya yung naghahalo ng Facebook page. Ngayon, syempre, iisip siya ng content strategy, etc. Tapos, gagawa siya ng content, pero yung mga ipopost sa Facebook page, isi-schedule niya na. Syempre, alam naman every every day ako online ka tapos ipopost mo yung sa Facebook page. So usually, you schedule it, di ba? So you either use an app to do the scheduling or uh, use the scheduled post sa Facebook. Pero siya, hindi na siya yung gumagawa nun. Mag-hire na lang siya ng isang staff. Uh, I know, kasi sa 199 job siya, uh, nag-hire, for 199 pesos, pakischedule naman to dito sa sa Hootsuite namin. So, alam mo yun, kasi some of the posts are text-based, some are uh, pictures, etc. Pero, pipigil niya na lahat. Ito yung uh, Excel file namin ng content. Pakischedule naman. So, that's 199 pesos na usually sabi niya, that would take me around 40 minutes, 1 hour to do. So, at least, yung isang oras na yun, para sa akin, marami na rin ako ibang magagawa. Minsan, yung isang oras na yun, I spend it to take a nap. It, it doesn't sound much, but yung nap ko na yun, it helps my improve my productivity and prepares me mentally so that I can be well rested for my next, next task. So yung 199 pesos na ginasos niya para iutos na mag-schedule ng post do sa social media management app na gamit niya for the client sa Facebook page, nakatipid siya sa uh, oras and it helps him to uh, make better decisions to select task at hand. So, those are some of, that's just a specific example of a mechanical task that you can actually outsource. Yung iba kasi, nanghihinayang na pwede ko namang gawin yung sayang. Pero, you have to ask yourself, look at the other side of the coin. Pag nag-hire ako dito, nagagawa, 
And yung oras na magtitipid ko will that make me more money? Okay? And kadalasan, yes, yung sagot. But of course, it depends on you. Iba-iba tayo. But what I've discovered is if you outsource your mechanical tasks, usually you will find a way to make more money. Of course, more than outsourcing, you can actually just hire. No, you can hire someone and train them to become your duplicate. So be, uh, you can hire a virtual assistant or a social media manager. So yung friend ko, instead of just outsourcing someone who will schedule the post, why not hire a full-time social media manager slash content strategist na siya na yung mag-handle ng client niya. Tapos he can just take a portion of the the, the payment so that alam mo yun, uh, you earn money but at the same time you uh, just manage your your staff who is doing the social media management. Okay? Next. Ito, scale up and collaborate. This is a, uh, a great way to improve your productivity or uh, should I say to improve your output. First is you work with other freelancers on projects. Uh, kadalasan kasi if you're just a one-man team, there's a certain limit of uh, project that you can accept. May mga large-scale projects that becomes already impossible for you to do without the help of others. And dun papasok yung pag pagkakaroon ng develop ng uh, pagdevelop mo ng strategic partners. So for me, for example, as a financial planner, uh, I do most of my work as a financial consultant. Pero I can actually take in mga mga corporate clients who wants them to manage their assets. No? Bakit? Kasi meron akong mga strategic partner na lawyers, meron akong strategic partners na talagang asset management service, etc. Uh, I just do the analysis and the consulting, pero yung pagdating sa legal work, sa accounting work, I already have strategic partners for that. And that allows me to take in bigger, larger scale projects. And of course, kaya nga improve your productivity, increase the output that I get. So, as a freelancer, you can start with uh, just working with other freelancers. Uh, the best place to look for them now is sa mga Facebook groups, particularly yung PayPal Philippines Freelancer Community Group. No, uh, Although, uh, it will take some time for you to find people who are uh, willing to work for you, but of course, there's no harm in trying. You can just post there, uh, I'm looking for someone who can do this for me, etc. Sometimes yung mga, I don't know how you call it now, but right now, uh, hanggang ngayon, ang tawag kong mga JV. May nagahan pa ng JV, joint venture. Ganun kami nun mag, ganun kami mag, uh, anapan dati kasi I'm in the freelance software development dati. I'm a freelance programmer dati. So, uh, kailangan ko ng JV. Ayan, ganun kami mag tawag na. So, joint venture. Mga projects that we can do. Next. Yeah, so, it's important for you to also set smarter goals for the things that next year, no? So, I, I, don't know, I don't know if you're familiar with smart goals, pero para sa akin, better yung smarter goals. So, what does smarter goal mean, no? So, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant time bound, plus, your goal should be exciting and rewarding, okay? So, para sa akin, when you are setting goals for yourself, uh, it's important na specific siya. Alam mo exactly kung ano yung gusto mong gawin. Okay? Or ano yung gusto mong ma-achieve. It is measurable. Again, it should be measured by, measurable by number. Para, uh, that's my preference, no? Particularly, if you want to buy something, you know exactly how much that thing is. No? That's the measure. Kasi kung makana na yung naiipon mo, alam mo kung malapit ka na ma-achieve malapit mo nang ma-achieve yung goal mo o hindi pa. Of course, at ina you have to be uh, parang realistic, no? Relevant, it should be something that is uh, important sa inyo. Kaya siya relevant. Hindi basta-basta goal lang na gusto mo kasi dahil uh, uh, it sounds good, no? But it is something that is actually relevant to your life. And ito, very important also, time-bound. Meron kang deadline. But of course, yung motivation niyo 
to reach your goal will will come for in the fact na yung goal yung is something na exciting to achieve and it is also rewarding. Next please. So this is a an, an example of some financial goals. So for example, um, are you familiar with the Facebook Blueprint certification? Something. Yes, no. Ano? Uh, ah, uh, yung friend ko nung kayo na may uh, kinikwento ko na nag-aral kung paano mag-set up ng Facebook ads. Diyan yung natutunan. It's a free online course. I-google nyo na lang or i-search nyo sa Facebook mismo. Yung Facebook Blueprint Certification. May bayad yung exam, but the learning is free. Yung exam, when you pass that, you are now going to be a certified Facebook uh, ad manager or something. Basta, I don't know the title. Pero, it's, it's, a, it's a code that you can set for yourself. I think the, the, the payment for the certification exam is $150 or something. I, 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 I'm not sure. But again, it's a financial goal. And it's something that you can set a goal for the next one to three months. Again, this is just an example. Huh? So, it's very specific. The goal is very specific. Plus, another probably good uh, financial goal that you can have is uh, get five new clients. As simple as that. What, what is that uh, a good goal? Kasi measurable, di ba? Meron ka exact number. Get five clients. So, pag naka, dalawa na ako, I know that I'm already approaching half of my goal, di ba? Kasi lima yung goal ko. Okay? So, yun yung part na parang measurable. Tapos, within the next three to six months, I want to have a Singapore vacation. Ano yan? Or, I want to buy a new phone, uh, particularly, specifically, a Huawei P20, diba? So, which is personally the best camera na nakita ko. I have a friend who bought a P20, sabi ko, wow, ang ganda ng camera niya. Okay, so, uh, side comment lang. But kasi yung friend ko ay Instagram influencer. So, sabi niya, yun talaga yung, yung, yung binili niya kasi napansin niya, yun yung best na camera phone. Yan. So, uh, of course, if you want to have a new laptop, and you can work for a MacBook Air. If you're planning to do a new online business, what type of online business? So, siguro within the next year, or within 2019, I want to start my own dropshipping business. That's, and so on and so forth. So, beyond 12 months, maybe you plan to buy your own condo, or you plan to buy your own car. So, don't just say your own condo or your own car. You ask yourself, anong klase condo ba? So, I want a condominium, a, a single bedroom by DFCI. Bakit important na ganyan? Or, I want a Honda Civic. Kasi, mahirap maging measurable ang isang, isang bagay na, wait, a new car. Ang isang bagong kotse would range from like 800,000 to 5 million. Alam mo yun? So, ano specifically? So, magkano na ba ang Honda Civic na yun? Are you familiar? May car sales? One million. Diba? For example, that's one million. So, magkano ba ang down payment? 20%. So, 200,000. Diba? So, sa 200,000, plus the rest, you will uh, have a four-year loan, so auto loan, which will result to around uh, four five thousand a month the mortgage I, I, and uh, buy it sa auto loan so ang goal mo is makuha yung 200,000 na down payment so sa kung ang balak mo bumili ng bagong kotse Honda Civic by the end of 2019 you have 12 months to save for 200,000 so every month siguro kailangan kong mag, mag save ng around magkano mga 1,800 pesos Alam mo, mas nakoconcretize mo yung, yung kailangan mong gawin kasi you are actually working with actual numbers. Yun yung importance nung pagiging measurable, previous. Yeah, no? Yung me pagiging me measurable. And by doing that, you can actually know if your goal is attainable. So, kaya ko ba mag-ipon or mag-seed mag ng ganun kalaki every month? If not, then you can actually adjust your timeline. Or you can probably challenge yourself na okay sige so what what should i what will what do i need to do para ma-achieve ko siya so do i need to have five more extra clients na x uh, uh, x number of new clients 
Uh, next please. Yeah. So, yung una kong goal na 5 new clients, baka siguro dapat 8 new clients yung i-target ko para magawa ko yung mga maging attainable sa akin yung mga iba kong uh, goals. Okay? Okay ba? Uh, next, this is the last part. Uh, making 2019 your best year ever. Next. So, prepare to achieve new heights in your freelancing career by earning more with new sources of income. I know some people who has been a freelancer for so many years and nothing has actually happened much sa kanila. Ang nangyayari na sa kanila is dumadami yung clients nila, pero that's it. Uh, ako, I challenge them na why not challenge yourself, of course, improve your productivity, try to scale up what you're doing. But more than that, why not build more new uh, sources of income? Next please. So, making more money. Of course, the first thing that you need to do is to audit your rates and fees. So, research on your peers and industry. Get certifications to justify higher rates or just simply ask for a raise. Uh, if you remember, kanina, sabi ko, by realizing na late pala lang yung magbayad ng client ko, <laughs> uh, I had the courage and actually the reason na to ask for a higher rate. Kasi nga, sabi ko na, medyo late kayo magbayad. So, and actually that was an easy, I wouldn't say a negotiation pa eh. Kasi when I requested that, pumayag siya kagad. Ah, oo nga, sige, don't worry. Uh, I'm sorry because the process in our company is really that long. So, I will request for a higher rate for you. And siya na yung nagkasikaso. So, sometimes you just have to ask your client if they can pay you more. Ayun. So, and that can usually, uh, that can work out uh, to your advantage. Again, your certifications, that's, that's very important. Some, uh, one of the way, best ways for you to uh, ask more money sa rates in your, if you get uh, some form of certifications, and there are a lot online. No? Next is, to scale up your freelancing business. So as I mentioned earlier, you can hire or outsource to other freelancers. You can collaborate with other freelancers uh, with bigger projects and, of course, send payments conveniently and security with PayPal. Okay, next, please. Uh, you can set up new income streams. Some of the new income streams that I've seen other freelancers uh, successfully do. Uh, first, blogging. You can try blogging. Right now, video blogging remains popular and is now easier to produce. I started blog blogging ng 2007 and during that time, marami na mga video bloggers uh, and they've been earning a lot already during that time. Ang problem nun, ang hirap mag video blog nun, no? you have to have the technical knowledge aside from the equipment. Pero right now, uh, video blogging is still very popular and it's now easier to produce. So you can try that. Uh, kilala niyo si Doig? Katena, yes. you know how much he's earning from his YouTube channel? I've met him once in a Philippine Airlines uh, event, no? He's earning around 200,000 pesos a month from ads to his YouTube channel. Niya. And that's the average, of course, the more views, the higher. And I'm sure you've heard of other top income earners on YouTube. And that's only YouTube. The good news is a Facebook, uh, just recently, I think around two or three weeks ago, they now accept uh, Facebook ads and eh, ads sa, face, sa videos that you upload on Facebook. Uh, kasi di ba pwede ka mag-upload ng video sa Facebook. Minsa pa nanunta ng video sa Facebook, di ba may ads. Dati, pag based ka sa Philippines, you cannot put ads and earn from them. Pero two weeks ago, sinama na ng Facebook ang Philippines sa mga countries na eligible kumita sa ads within videos. Nagkat siya sinabi ko? Yun. So, that's, uh, that's something to consider and that's one of the reasons why I'm now considering uploading my videos on YouTube. I actually have a YouTube channel uh, to Facebook as well. Kasi now, I can earn. Marami akong I, I, I know some people here know my YouTube channel. Ha? Yung sa WebRT. Uh, sa company ko. Me and my co-founder, si Renzi, we discuss personal finance topics. And 
we earn we actually earn around 150 to 200 dollars a month from the YouTube channel because you see you know may ads so that's that's an easy 200 dollars a month for us okay but now uh, a lot of people are asking us, but hindi niya ina-upload sa Facebook kasi di ba more people are Facebook and hindi ko lang masabi na kasi wala lang mga makikikitahin pag in-upload namin sa Facebook yung videos na. Okay? Kaya for the past two years, we've been uploading it sa YouTube. But now, that could change. I have to talk to my co-founder uh, to do our strategic planning for the channel. But uh, probably we will now start uploading it on our Facebook page because it will now help us earn more. Huh? Okay. Uh, selling digital products like ebooks or online courses. Ebooks, medyo self explanatory, but online courses, that's always been uh, very profitable. I've been selling online courses since 2012, and up until now, marami pa rin. And maganda sa online courses, you just have to re record yourself teaching, and then you can set it up like a vending machine, no? Uh, I don't know if you encountered an online course na automated, but there are now apps that can help you uh, simulate a live learning session. Pero lahat yun, automatic na siya. Narinig yun na yung ano, Ever Webinar. Okay. Yeah, good, hindi nyo pa narinig. Kasi yun nga, meron kang website na, of course, meron kang video na, uh, next week, we will have a webinar ganyan ngayon. It's a live something. Tapos, magsasign up ka kasi meron schedule ng webinar. Pag ito sa webinar na yun, akala mo na sa live session ka. But it's actually a pre-recorded webinar. Tapos, yung mga mga questions, naka-feed na. So, akala mo live yung chat. Ikaw, magtatanong ka. Di ba? Pero mangyayari, Sasabihin lang doon na parang there are a lot of questions na hindi ko nasagot, I will answer them through email. Kung sino may may-ari doon, bago receive niya lahat ng questions na na-receive doon sa chat, so sasagotin niya personally. Pero yun, later on, mag-a-accept siya na if you want to learn more, you can enroll in my uh, online course, etc. After doon, some people who who will go to the website again, makikita nila, oh, join our live webinar next week, ganyan ngayon. Kasi naka-automate siya. Eh, hindi yung every webinar na ginagamit ko at ginagamit ng mga tao. And since 2012, it has, making, it has been making me good money. Passively, automated. Ang ginagawa ko na lang talaga is nag-answer ng emails ng mga nagtatanong sa during the webinar. So, yun na lang ginagawa ko. So, set up a membership or subscription site. I have a friend who is very good in the stock market. Yung tips niya, you can get that for 800 pesos a month. Subscription site. Uh, he uses PayPal. Bakit? Kasi sa PayPal mayroong subscription feature na pag nag-subscribe ka, automatic monthly i-sisigilin, man maniningin, no? Tapos yung, ano niya, yung website niya, uh, Stock Market Trading Signals. Yun yung service niya. So, monthly, kumikita siya. And uh, for something that he actually does, because he is a stock market trader for a living, so aside from making money from his own stock market trades, he also makes money dun sa nakasubscribe, dun sa advice niya. So, mga kumukopya nung ginagawa niya. Okay? So, if you're in the stock market, you can approach me later. I'll tell you who my friend is. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, next is offer new services like coaching or mentoring. Sabi ko nga, uh, may, may kumagawa na ba nito dito? Mentoring or coaching? Merong nag-aaten ng mentoring or coaching? Wala? Uh, if you have something that you can share, uh, the usual rate for an online mentoring or coaching session is 1,500 to 2,500 pesos per hour. Okay? Meron akong Meron akong uh, kakilala na meron siyang life coaching service. Diba? Ang particularly ang target niya ay yung mga young urban professionals na nagko-quarter life crisis. Familiar ba kayo sa quarter life crisis? Yung nalilito ka nung purpose niya sa buhay, hindi niya alam kung tama yung career niya. So nag-offer siya ng life coaching services. Uh, yun, yun yung sige niya. Actually, 
2,000 pesos per hour. So, para siyang therapist, no? Pero hindi, life coaching. That's a, that easy money. Or si Cesar, so, alam mo, ano kayo, laway lang talaga yung pumunan mo eh. Kasi yung mga inspirational advice mo, mga nababasa ko lang yan sa Facebook eh, pero, ano yan, pa para Facebook kasi nilinigay mo sa kanila. So, hindi naman sa mayamanin ko yun, pero sabi ko, alam mo, it's just me saying na, ang galing mo eh. Ano yun? Tama ka, life coach ka nga, kasi kaya mong kunin yung the best of something and i-amplify it para ma-motivate sila at ma-feel good sila about themselves. Kasi sabi nyo, ah, nagka-quarter life crisis, usually, alam mo um, yun, they just need someone to tell them what they are, what they already know that they should do. So, yun, actually, it's worse na yun, no? Alam na naman nila yung kailangan nilang gawin. Kailangan mo lang i-validate kailangan mo lang uh, i-assure sa kanila na tama yung balak nilang gawin. So anyway, so yun no, yung coaching and mentoring may big money din yan. No? Uh, affiliate marketing for either virtual or real-life products and so many others. So marami akong alam na online racket. Pwede nyo akong kausapin or email to be sa inyo. Kasi di, wala talagang best. It really depends on your resources. It depends on, it depends on your skill. It depends on your Interest. Next, please. So be aware of what's trending and what's up and coming in your particular industry. So that's important. Ano ba yung uh, uso at magiging uso sa industry niyo? So of course, iba ibang industry, no? Next. So freelancer outlook from Tim Johnson, which is a Forbes Business Council, Business Development Council officer. Sabi niya nga. There will be a large-scale adoption of freelancers by 2027. It's predicted that freelance workers will outnumber non-freelance non-freelancers by around 3 million in the United States alone. So, sabi niya, so projections by 2027, mas marami na freelancer kesa sa empleyado. Yeah? So, uh, right now you are still in a very good position to. Uh, to position, you're still a very good position to take advantage of this opportunity. Yeah, next. So with that, I would like to discuss with you, ano ba yung mga top 20 fastest growing skills for freelancers? Uh, next. So this is according to Upwork in a September 2018 report. Yeah. Top 20 fastest growing skills for freelancers. So first is blockchain. So you can develop Websites, apps, software, and systems using blockchain technology, or even uh, doing uh, information drive. Because uh, anything related to blockchain, okay? Because not a lot of people understand it. So, if you know it, you have uh, you have an advantage over others. Uh, particularly, if you want to program, I I have a friend who is in the blockchain industry. Tinanong niya ako, meron ko pang kilalang uh, web developer na gagawa ng online store pero cryptocurrency yung primary source of payment. Sabi ko, wala ay eh, bakit? So, sayang kasi yung budget namin, 250,000 pesos a month yung, develop, yung, yung ginawang budget. Sabi ko, ba't hindi kayo mag-hire ng, ng programmer? Eh kasi siyempre after magawa yung website, yung may na lang namin, we will have to let them go. Diba? So it's better to, at the start, meron na talagang, alam yun, this is a short-term project, a uh, six to eight months ano, uh, project that you have to build. 250,000 pesos a month. Diba? So blockchain. Second, TensorFlow, creating machine learning applications using this open source software library. Meron bang nasa IT industry dito? Kasi programming. Ayan. So alam niyo mga pag-aaralan. Ako, I used to be a civil engineer. The way for me to jump to freelancing was actually through IT. I I became a freelance software developer. Wala akong kaalam-alam noon, pero pinag-aralan ko uh, VB, so basic, VB SQL. Okay? So, that was my ticket uh, to go to freelancing. So, this may be alien terms to you, but consider it. No? So, ten TensorFlow, it's a programming language. Amazon DynamoDB, so this is database management sa Amazon Web Services. Okay, next. Ito, ito, I'm sure mas familiar ko sa inyo. 
Four, voice over. Okay? Voice talent for videos and animations. Mas marami na kasi ngayon nagko-consume ng videos. And syempre, hindi lahat ng tao maganda yung boses. Okay? So, kung maganda na yung boses niyo, pwede kayong maging voice talent for these videos. Subtitling. So, audio and video transcription and translation. A friend of mine uh, does subtitling right now. Dati, medical trans transcriptionist siya. Pero, hindi niya siya medical transcriptionist ngayon. Ang sinasabi sabi niya sa akin, I am now a subtitlist. Now, wala difference. Kasi dati, uh, mga, med mga medical summit yung pinatranscribe niya. Mga, mga speech ng mga doctors sa mga conventions. Ngayon daw, ang mga sinasubtitle niya, mga independent films, short movies, etc. animations. Tapos, since uh, marunong siya ng Spanish, kasi European languages yung uh, portion of college, yung international client niya, yung uh, short film, isa subtitle niya ng English, isa subtitle din niya ng Spanish. And she earns around 80 to 90,000 pesos per per me per may 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 type per hour of videos na subtitle. Basta may ganun no, uh, which is a total package na from the English uh, subtitle at saka yung Spanish translation. So, I'm not really sure pero yun na yung official uh, title niya. Sabi niya, hindi na ako medical transcriptionist, I'm now a subtitlist. So, so, so fast is growing, no. Uh, another is art direction. So, creating the artistic look for marketing, fashion, media, websites, games, etc. So, I think this is more prevalent sa mga marketing uh, industry, no? Yung art direction. Next, please. Content strategy. So, this is yung digital marketing na to, no? So, content marketing for brands and personalities. So, meron akong... May pinsan ako. Yung best friend ng pinsan ko, na tayo ng travel agency. Nilapitan ako nung pinsan ko, sabi sa akin, tulad ko malamay yung friend ko kasi hindi niya alam ko anong ipopost niya sa Facebook page niya. Bakit ano ba yung negosyo niya? Travel agency. Sabi ko, alam mo madali na yan kasi travel agency siya. Nung hindi niya ako yung page, ano yung pinopost? Yung mga latest tour package. Kaya sabi ko, walang matutuwa sa Facebook page. No? Yeah. So, kailangan mo ng content strategies. So, meron akong kakilala na content strategies, binigay ko sa kanya. Sabi ko sa friend ko, kailangan may katakot 10% ko so sa ibabayad sa'yo <laughs> sa content strategies. Diba? Kasi nirefer kita eh. Pinsan ko yan, so hindi mo ko madadaya. Diba? <laughs> so, uh, my friend asked, is earning 10,000 pesos a month to do the content strategy. Content strategy pa lang yun, ha? Kasi nag-iisip ko ano yung post Iba pa yung actual na nag-post at nagmamanage yung page. Ha? So, yun. Uh, computer vision. So, programming computers to analyze digital images and videos. So, side comment na meron akong nakita local marketing company. Ang, ang focus nila, yung digital billboards na i-recognize niya yung face mo kung ano yung depende sa age na ma-recognize niya yung ad na lalabas. So, there was a there was an event in City of Dreams three weeks ago din demo nila kasi pag dumaan ako usually mga pang pang 30s yung ads yung product sa lumalabas wala silang actual product pero pinapakita lang nila na buy this uh, uh, the, this uh, clothing boutique no? uh, buy from our, our clothing boutique at sale this week ganyan ganyan tapos din demo niya na yung anak niya na parang 8 years old pinadaan niya sa billboard tapos ano lumabas doon mga toy, uh, yung toy ad na sample niya. So sabi ko, ang smart naman ito. Yun. So yung computer vision, yun yung uh, tabaho niya. Freelancer daw siya, yung may-ari na nakausap ko. Yun yung ginagawa niya for other companies. At naisip niya, ginagawa ko sa ibang kumpanya, bakit wala akong makita ng local clients? Kasi hindi pa siya kilala locally. So yun ngayon, gumawa siya ng tech startup. So, yun. so side comment. Pasesya na makuwento ako. <laughs> so, Microsoft Power BI, which is Business Intelligence Report. So, uh, it's something that you can also look into. Uh, next, please. Mm -hmm. Augmented reality. So, 
from development to quality testing of various apps, software, and hardware. So, uh, I have a college friend na nagde-develop ng games na augmented reality. And, uh, share ko lang masaya siya kasi nag-test ako like last month, no? Yung augmented reality shooting game. Very immersive. Uh, and I think uh, with a little more improvement, it can be like uh, something that the mass market would accept. Ito, puso-puso to ngayon, no? Chatbot development. Halos lahat ng mga kilala kong Facebook social media manager, pinag-aaralan ngayon na. Nag-aaralan ngayon. Ano na application Meron na, no? So chatbot, no? It's something, it, pag mauna ka, it's something that you can take advantage of. Uh, React Native, it's a framework for developing mo mobile mobile apps. So if you're into mobile, you can uh, uh, check that out. Uh, next, please. Media buying. So ito yung sinasabi ko, yung na-pensa ko kanina, Facebook Blue Blueprint Certification. Yun. Meron doon Certified Media Buyer, na naalala ko bigla. Yun yung title ng friend ko. At yun yung ginagawa niya, ay sineset up niya yung Facebook ads ng mga companies. And he gets paid for that for doing that. So, media buying, using customer data and analytics to optimize online ads for brands. So, naisip nyo ba, may ganyan pa ng cracket, no? Na pwede kang kuminta ng malaki dyan. Okay? So, pag sinabi kasi yung freelancer, that typical freelancing that we know is uh, social media manager, freelance writer, graphic designer, di ba? Virtual assistant. Pero there are actually skills na pwede kang mag-focus on and you can actually make more and better money, you know. So, Go development. So, Google Go's programming language. Inter information security. So, uh, I'll just briefly mention this, no? Uh, next. Scala development. Then, ito. Interesting, Instagram API. So, there are a lot of apps that want to integrate to Instagram. So, if you know how to uh, interface Instagram with uh, other apps or online tools, that's something that uh, you can specialize on. Number 18, Adobe, Adobe Premiere. So, as mentioned earlier, videos, uh, mas nagiging madali na siya i-produce. And ngayon, new video editing for content marketing, advertising, and filmmaking, it's also um, becoming uh, very popular. Particularly, Adobe Premiere yung gamit nila. Okay, next. Machine learning and Angular JS development. Hindi ko na masyadong uh, mention But those are in the IT industry. Next. So, ang tanong ngayon, saan nyo siya pwede pag-aralan? Hindi nyo kailangan pumasok sa formal school. Actually, all of those that I mentioned, there's a beginner course sa Coursera. Familiar kayo sa Coursera? Yes. Yeah. Sa Udemy. I'm sure, familiar kayo. edX. edX.org. So, meron dyan. LinkedIn Learning. Alam nyo ba na meron online school ang LinkedIn? Yeah. So, check out LinkedIn Learning and Skillshare. Lahat ng 20 na sinabi ko, there's a beginner course, there's an intermediate course that is uploaded dito sa mga website na to. Some are free, some are paid, uh, pero all of them is accessible. Yun yung point doon. And if you want to learn yung mga advanced uh, levels of the, the topics that I gave you or the freelance skills that I gave you, then I, I think that's the time that you can formally enroll in a school. And, and, pero just learning the basics uh, and some of the intermediate uh, uh, topics about uh, those skills, you can access, access it here. Okay? Next. Lastly, Prepare financially for what's up ahead. So always remember that failing to plan is planning to fail. Next. So make an expense timeline. So this is something that I always remind people. So an expense timeline helps in effectively planning your budget. By knowing your upcoming expenses, it's easier to reason your way out of an impulse or unnecessary expense. So it gives you motivation to work and manage your budget properly. So next. So papasin yung ito yung smarter goals natin kanina. Usually, your goals is also your expense timeline. So, kung mga kayo naglalakad kayo, mamaya, nasa planeta kayo, 
Or green belt, may nakita kayo seal. Naka-seal na, na, ano ba, sapatos. Okay? So, that's like 5,000 pesos. So, tatanin nyo sa akin, di ba? Ano bang gusto ko, 5,000 pesos o Singapore vacation sa summer? Di ba? Kasi 5,000 pesos, that's already uh, your pocket money, pocket money on your Singapore vacation. Pag sinay mo yun, ano lang gagawin mo? Maghihintay ka na lang ng seat sale, di ba? Kasi once may seat sale ka, meron ka ng pocket money, tapos Airbnb ka, di ba? Meron ka lang Singapore vacation. So it's a concrete goal, a measurable goal, an exciting goal and rewarding goal for you. But of course, may gasto siya. So ngayon, you have to know, and you can now be aware, if you do this expense timeline slash your financial goals, kailangan ko mag-ipon para magawa ko yung goal na yun. So pag mamaya, may nakita kayong sale, something sa patos, hindi mo naman tayo kailangan, nakasale, maganda, gusto mong bilhin, it's now easier for you to remind yourself na don't spend impulsively because you actually have these exciting goals that you're planning for. I guess ya? Okay, so next is, so again, remember the same rule, income minus savings is equal to expenses. So, when you whenever you receive income or payment from your client, take away your savings, and then whatever is left, pwede nyo na siyang gasosin. Okay? Mahirap kasi magtipid pag freelancer ka kasi hindi regular yung income. Diba? So, minsan meron kang pera na dumadating sunod-sunod na minsan nakaka- nakaka-tent na maging magasas kasi ang daming clients na nagbabayad. Minsan, wala. So, ang hirap mag-save regularly. So, usually, ang ginagawa ko, every time na may malisip akong pera, I immediately save. I take away, uh, well, right now, I take away 40%, but that's too big, no? Uh, for, to start, no? If you're just starting this, you can start with 5% of your income and then move your way up to probably 10, 20%, okay? And then, whatever is left, yun yung maganda doon, no? Kung ano yung matira, pwede mo na ubusin. And I started doing this when I was working. Pag natin yung sweldo, um, dati, kailangan kong magtipid kasi gusto kong mag-save. So pag nagaya yung office mates ko, or friends ko, tara labas tayo, kayo na lang kasi natitipid ako. So nakaka-self-pity. Pero nung pinilit ako, di ba kasi natitipid kasi ako, hindi ako makalabas. Diba? Pero nung nag-iba yung mindset ko, pwede din yung sweldo ko, tatanggalin ko na yung savings ko. Uh, when I was still working as an engineer, uh, I started saving 10%. So, kukunin yung 10%, itatago ko na, nalagyan na sa separate savings account. So, every time natatanungin ako ng friends ko, tara labas tayo, hindi na ko lang yung wallet ko, chichay ko lang yung ATM ko. Every time na may pera doon, I will answer, sige, tara. Diba? I don't have to think about, ano eh, saving eh. I don't have to think about na, hindi ko kailangan isipin na magtitipid, natitipid ako. Kasi, at the start, nakapagtago na ako. So, maubos man lahat ng pera ko sa ATM, tsaka sa wallet, okay lang kasi, may na-save na ako nung umpisa. Yun yung difference, hindi na siya stressful, hindi na ako na siya self-PT. Kasi kung mapansin nyo, pag, pag inilimit nyo yung access nyo sa pera, nag-a-adjust yung lifestyle ninyo. It's the same way na pag tumataas yung sweldo natin, nag-a-adjust nyo yung lifestyle. Na feeling natin wala nag-improve sa, uh, sa savings natin, hindi tayo nakapag-save kahit na umakit yung sweldo natin. Kasi nag-a-adjust yung lifestyle. Pero it's the same sa opposite direction. Pag nililimit mo yung budget mo, usually nag-a-adjust din yung lifestyle. So, pag yung pera na sinuwento mo, hindi mo na nakikita yung savings kasi automatic mo siyang, may mga ganun na ngayon ang banko eh, pagdating ng sinuwento, automatic debit, or you can just do it online, automatic transfer to a passbook account. So, hindi mo siya ma-withdraw kundi punta sa banko, di ba? So, ang natitira sa ATM account mo, it's something that you can freely and guiltlessly uh, consume and spend because nakapag-save na kayo so that's a very good rule to follow. Next. So don't worry much about running out of money. So instead, try to focus more on how to make more money. Uh, this is my favorite mindset when it comes to personal finance. A lot of people, they really worry about yung running out of money. They focus on the problem na kulang yung, uh, ano nila, marami silang kailangan bayaran. Okay? Dahil kung gastusin, may araw kong 
uh, kailangan bayaran, etc. Doon sila lang focus. I tell them na, why don't you focus more on the income? Saan ba ako pwedeng kumita ng pera? Ano ba yung mga pwede kong gawin para kumita ng pera? When you focus more on that, usually you find those opportunities that will help you achieve it. So, focus more on making money. So, don't waste time worrying about your expenses. You know it's there. One of the reasons why you have to make an expense timeline, kasi nalista mo na siya lahat, hindi mo na siya kailangan paulit-ulit na isipin. Kasi titignan mo na yung listahan mo, alam mo na. Nailabas mo na siya sa subconscious mo. Alam mo yun? Pag inisip mo, ano ba yung mga kailangan mong bayaran? Paulit-ulit, di ba? Sayang yung oras na, na papagod yung utak mo sa kakaisip ng mga kailangan mong bayaran. Lista mo para hindi mo na siya kailangan laging uh, iniisip. Okay. So, let's summarize. Next. Uh, so, Smart Money Rules for 2019. So, first, you have to end the year, right? When I say end the year, right, you have to take the time to evaluate the year that was and find ways to improve your numbers for 2019. So, improve your numbers by analyzing what happened in the past year. You cannot just tell yourself that it's only your resolution for. Okay? Better if your New Year's resolution nyo may nakakabit na number. So, favorite New Year's resolution ng mga tao, mag-diet, magpapayat, at saka mag-save ng money, di ba? Maging matipid. Uh, sinasabi ko, ako, if I will tell myself na ang New Year's resolution ko is magpapayat, that's not a smart goal. Ang smart goal is I have to reach 175 pounds. That's my ideal weight uh, according to my BMI. Pero yung isa kong yung nutritionist ko, sinabi sa akin na, don't believe in BMI anymore. That's an obsolete concept already. Diba? What is important is yung vital stats mo is okay. Normal yung blood sugar, normal yung cholesterol. Diba? And you feel energetic. Sabi ko, but my blood work is all normal and I feel energetic. Kaya lang, Laki chat ko, sabi ko. Well, you just have to lose some weight, but it's not essential to you. So, sabi niya sa akin, so what should be my ideal weight? Sabi niya, well, rather than working for an ideal weight, work for an ideal waistline. Yes, sabi niya. So, right now, sabi, which is what I'm working on, is uh, a waistline of 32. Kasi right now, it's 36. Ah. So, 32. Almost, ngayon, it's something measurable. Diba? So, yun. Uh, it's the same for money. Sabi ko, don't just tell yourself that you will start saving money. You have a specific amount. You will start saving 10% of your income every month. So that's a good goal. Okay? Kasi measurable siya. So a better start of the year. So you have to increase your productivity. You can do that by automating the things that you do. Delegating some of the tasks that keeps you busy. And of course, collaborating with other freelancers so that you can uh, work on larger scale projects. And making 2019 your best year ever means leveling up or scaling up, taking your freelancer career to new heights. You can do this by learning new skills and creating additional sources of income. Okay, next please. Yeah. So that's it. That's my talk for today. Alex. Yeah. So thank you. If you have Twitter, you can follow me on at Brad Pitts, yeah, they are only f i That's also my Instagram account. So you can follow me on IG, pero kasi off-brand yung IG ko kasi naka-feed goals ako doon, tsaka travel photos. Hindi siya about personal finance. But nonetheless, medyo inspirational yung mga captions ko sa pictures ko every now and then. But Twitter, yeah, that's my my uh, handle, at Brad Pitts. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for listening and uh, ano ko kayo mayroon na yan? Ha? Activity! Okay. So, as an activity, do I explain it? Or? Wala lang. Wala lang. Gusto mo mag-reminder? Yeah. Okay, once again, let's give a round of applause to our speaker on stage. So, then we learned a lot. Well, so, before we were able to like plan for our 2019, we have first to, like what we said, evaluate where we're at currently financially, and then before we start planning and you know having smarter goals. So it's important, very important not just to have goals, but to have smarter goals that are specific, measurable, time-bound, and also exciting. exciting. Yeah, so, because before we can be too confined with our goals, that 
ano na siya sa atin. Serious masyadong. Masyadong serious. Parang burden na. So, ayan. So, again, uh, just a reminder, uh, please feel free to tag us uh, at PayPal Philippines. Use, use the hashtag PayPal Freelancer. Also, if you're not still not connected to any of our Wi-Fi networks, there are three. Uh, the passwords are on the, on the posted on both sides of the room. So, uh, I, I think at this point, we're gonna go to our activity. Um, so, the activity is, um, so everyone has their own notebooks, right? So, we're just gonna make use of those. Um, what you have to do is to list down your career, career goals in 2019 as freelancers, right? So, uh, taking off uh, everything that we have learned from Fitz's talk, uh, plan it out, what, what do you want to be or where do you want to go, what do you want to, to get come 2019? And then determine how you can achieve this goal. So this will, this is where your, yeah, what do you call that, your timeline mo, uh, in creating your goals. This is where you should take advantage of that and use that to create your goals. And then uh, we'll have volunteers later on to win special people. So it's very uh, more of um, application now of what we have learned earlier. So we'll give you time to answer those. If you need us to go back to a certain part of the presentation, just let us know. And then later on, We'll have an open discussion about it so that fits can further like assess your goals if there are even if there are smarter goals that you're that you've set for yourself. So um, that's it. So we'll start that activity now again. We'll give you 20 minutes to do that. Thank you. Okay, so sana smarter yung goals sa set no. Aside from the goal, nakaset doon ano yung pagkani magagastos, And when do you plan to to achieve that goal and what I will ask you later is why do you think that goal is exciting and rewarding for you? Okay? So, yun. Um, yes, okay. So, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, at least one, yun na lang, no? Uh, at least one. Uh, something that you really want to achieve in your freelancing career for next year, no? No specific number. Uh, siguro mamaya dito sa taas. We'll just discuss one, no? So, that's it. Okay, so... Uh, you, know you already have? Yeah, I already uh, or later na lang. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, wait for the others. Right? Alright. So, 20 minutes ba? Yeah. Alright. In the meantime, some of them you can go to the bathroom yeah. or, or coffee. get coffee and some snacks, right? Ako mag kakapi rin ako. Okay, so I'll see you later. Talk to you. So, uh, it's time to, uh, to, to present your goals based on the, everything that you've learned from it. So, Fitz will be here. So you'll ano assess, no? Help assess and give comments on your goals. So the, the, the more realistic your goals are, the, the, the better it is for you. Because there are realistic advice din na, that will be coming from it. So we'll do this democratically, the usual way that we do it. So we will be needing volunteers. And then anyone who will volunteer will have special prizes from PayPal. So uh, okay, our, first, our first volunteer. Okay, sir, come up front. Okay, please, please take your name and if, and if you're a freelancer, tell us uh, what to do so that everyone gets to know you. So guys, let's uh, give a hand to Sir Noel. First, first of all, uh, I'm a senior citizen. And so, uh, I just got my senior ID last uh, month. And I just filed my... Uh, I have to be honest about it because we're making about money. So I, I realized my pension from Social Security is only 7,000 cents per month. And I'm paying rent on uh, my apartment in Manila is only uh, is 11,500. So it's not enough. So now I have a reason to leave Manila. So I have a schedule on December 11. I have to make a business presentation in Switzerland or in Europe. And my my 
my platform this year is to apply for Estonia here resident. So I, I always outline here how much it would cost and the goal. So for Estonia here residency is 100 uh, euro. I just put here 100 dollars. So it's already uh, two two items already: the goal and the money. So the other one is I need. Uh, to register a website, so for two dollars, which is Black Friday today, I, I registered uh, two websites. So if you want to know that one is socialize.icu, the other one is zax.icu. Of course, I will register more tonight, but just for the sake of the money, two dollars each, so that's four dollars. So for um, e commerce. E-commerce website, uh, e-commerce tool, uh, I received today for the Black Friday, is only uh, $4.50 a month, $4.50 a month times 12. So that's about oh, 5 times 12 is $60 a year. So at least for one year, I, I have it covered. And then that is also my goal, to have a platform. In fact, the other guy asked me, what are you going to sell? No? Yes. There is no problem what you sell because there is such a thing as drop shipping, although that's not part of the traffic topic now. No? I'm just talking about the goal yeah. and the, the money involved. So uh, I have already uh, paid a platform to, to have my, my website. It's paid already and the name of that uh, and it's unlimited because I was one of the original founding uh, members. I, I think I only paid a hundred dollars, and just for the sake of discussion. And the, the name of that website is boldcommerce.com. So, and then another one that that is for the Black Friday is ecwid.com, equid.com. So you can have a uh, online for, and the Black Friday offer is only. Uh, I think for for oh, I think I mentioned that already. Yeah. So so it's in my list that is quite good. So I need a plane ticket to Switzerland. So I, I need a hundred dollars one way ticket to Switzerland. So so I, I don't have to explain that. I only pay a hundred dollars. So this is just my reality. So yes. My personal reality. I only need one hundred dollars one way ticket. I have a visa for Switzerland for ninety days and. It's sold already, no? So, so, and now I, the, the reason, I think the reason, why Estonia? So, to make it exciting. So, in Estonia, uh, usually if you need a champion visa, you have to present 1 million pesos. No, my, my money now is only 100. 150,000 pesos cash. Of course, my wife has more money, but that's that's the violent part. But my own personal money in my ATM is only, in fact, it's only 100,000 in my one ATM. I have to honest with the money. Actually, my first priority is to go to Las Vegas. So, why Las Vegas? It's easy money, no? Las Vegas. Huh? Uh, what I mean is, you know, in my reality, if you can Google my name, uh, uh, I won, uh, say, uh, $3,000 playing chess in, in the U.S. Yeah, $3,000, but here in the Philippines, I'm nobody. Kasi matalino, you know, yeah. So what I'm saying is, I'm talking about money. So, so I go to Las Vegas, and I'm sure I could win $3,000 or $5,000, but, and I was looking at Airbnb. So talking about Airbnb, I, I look at the in, in Switzerland for Airbnb for five days, and I need only one day to make my presentation. And of course, I don't speak to succeed. No? I will fail. That's why I have a fail over. So if I fail, so before I do that, before I do that, I have to get a job online. Uh, my last job was with IBM, you know, earning so much money. So, but. It's good that I'm out of it, you know, I'm, I'm out of it because most of my office mates are dead or, you know. Uh, just just to, to give you the reality, you know. He said, but you think I asked my boss, boss about this. He said, I had a heart surgery and our insurance company 
Yeah, that's uh, give sir a round of applause. Uh, I like the enthusiasm, sir. Uh, and it's always uh, I always remind people that age is not a reason for you to to quit. No, um, that's a reality. I advise a lot of retirees who realize that they don't have enough pension to survive. And I tell them that you can always do a lot of a lot of things, no? kahit na uh, retiring age ka na. And uh, I'm wishing you, sir, a lot of luck sa mga ventures niyo. I've experienced that, pitching to a venture capitalist. Yeah. Exciting siya. More than the result, if they will give you seed funding, it's really the learning and the network that you will build. No? So, um, I pitch a tech startup project to a venture capitalist in Singapore two years ago. Um, uh, more than the relationships that I built, the opportunities that I got in the joint pa lang ng pitching event na yan, is more than enough return for me. So uh, eventually, we got a seed funder, a venture capitalist, sa tech startup kami, na taga Pilipinas, no? Uh, sabi ko, kung tapos na Singapore para na pitch na sa Pilipinas ang pala yung kapitalista natin. But sabi ko, joke lang yon, kasi yung kapitalista namin na taga Pilipinas na meet namin doon sa Singapore event na yun. No? So, alam mo so, it's always exciting the network, the people you meet is uh, the real goal no, no, pag umatid ka ng mga pitching events. Uh, yun, so good luck sir. Uh, anyone who still wants to share? Si, ano, uh, plan kayo, mamaya. Thanks, Fitz. Uh, yeah, good afternoon. Uh, you know, uh, there's like a lot of new faces right here. So, yeah, good afternoon. My name is Mark Andriwala. I'm also known as the Digital Enabler. I've been a freelancer ever since 2012. Uh, I actually did a webinar uh, talk with Get Social PH with entrepreneur uh, guys with other freelancers just I think during social media week two weeks ago. Kasabay ng sa BGC. Nila Ginger, yeah, so that Ginger. So I know Fitz, I know uh, Abe, I know Ginger, who's uh, from Taksumo, yeah, mommyginger.com. So yeah, 
I've been in this industry ever since 2012, since I stopped being an office worker. Uh, so, dito na talaga ako. Currently, I'm a digital marketing expert um, and uh, earning six, fig uh, six figures every month. Uh, so, hindi yung tiro. Alam nila fits yan. Alam nila ginger yan. Alam nila avian. I've been a blogger since 2013. I own Teke Pinas, Reg Tech News. So, yan. And then, um, financial planning with regards to the question. Um, siguro, ang um, plano ko lang within this year is to gain more investments. Yan si Fitz, tinulungan ako niya one time. Uh, he's a good friend of mine sa Facebook. I actually uh, messaged him, I think, a few months ago. Kasi I invested in uh, an investment for, for BPI, which is a short-term investment. Uh, medyo maliit lang siya, hindi naman ganun kalaki. Kasi I just trying into investments. And then, uh, I have investments into cryptocurrency as well. Kasi I have... Um, uh, a client who made me a co-founder of a uh, blockchain real estate ICO. So, yon. We've actually been done for that ICO and we're able to raise $21 million. Uh, I have four clients currently. Actually, it's supposed to be five. I turned down ako ng isang client kasi medyo makulit. So, your Chinese client na ICO din yung hawak. They're more into online gambling. Anyway, so, ang target ko ngayon is makapag-gain pa mo ng more investments. Um, reality goal is maybe to have at least 1 million uh, vested more into investments uh, and then um, more into stocks, uh, more into let's just say mutual fund stocks uh, and they're more into passive income. He said, um, when you gain, uh, let's say, six figures from being a freelancer, yung pera mo, hindi mo malaman minsan kung saan mo ilalagay. So the best tip, you know, in this effect, the best tip for you is, for me, I have my own. I get like around 50, well, I have this kind of uh, 50, 30, 20. So 50, you put it more into the important things, yung mga babayaran mo, kuryente mo, tubig mo, internet mo, apartment mo, or condo, if you're into that. And then the 20%, pwede mo magbalik rin yung 20 and 30, 20 or 30, you put it more into in your investments or savings. You save to invest. Don't save just to put it in a savings. Okay? So you make it as a passive income. And then, lastly, yung 20 or 30 percent mo, pwede mo siya into your leisure. Doon sa pananood mo ng sine, yung pambili mo ng mga important things, mga chichirya mo, whatsoever. No, yung mga whatever. Kung ano yung gusto mo sa araw-araw, especially when it comes to you, you may anak ako, may anak ako, I have a six-year-old daughter, so medyo magastos, syempre school, kapabili ng lawan and stuff, nagyayayas akong saan-saan, paminsan-minsan. So, doon, doon na pupunta minsan yung 20 or 30 percent. Pero you make it a point na, once you are a freelancer, you, you, typically save. Kasi hindi lahat ng kliyente mo nagtatagal sa'yo. I usually get like, the same client lang na, ano lang, two months lang, or sabihin natin, you get a client for a week, you get a client for for two weeks lang. Pero, mainly, most of my clients are not, ano, uh, hindi siya voice or VA. Kasi, ano yan, that's the very common, uh, especially if you're gonna be applying for Upwork. Upwork, napakahirap na mga uh, program right now. Especially, if you do have very, very common uh, skills that you are actually applying for. Ay, VA ako, nagtapos ako ng call center, six months ako sa ganyan, and everything that's, ano yun, V. That's very common. Uh, going mo, um, you need to learn on yourself. Hindi yung pagkatapos ka sa school, you just stop from there and you just, you know, wala lang, pag hindi ka mag-aaral. If you cannot do online courses na may bayad, you just go and attend these free seminars. That is actually the best investment that you can have. You can actually uh, watch videos from YouTube, you know, do dropshipping, uh, click funnels. You, you know, I've, I've learned a lot from that. Uh, I've been uh, certified by Hootsuite as a social media manager. Um, I've been with Microsoft, Microsoft MVP, uh, 2014 for uh, Windows Consumer. So that's Microsoft Most Valuable Professional. So lahat yung pinag-aralan ko online. My, my course back then was Bachelor in Science and Mass Communications. 2005 ako tumaraduate. Uh, two years ako ng IT. So, pero mainly, ang ginagawa ko ngayon is mainly digital marketing. to blockchain ako. 
to cryptocurrency. Wala yan nun eh, nung back then. So pag hindi mo siya pinag-aralan ngayon, wala, wala kang ma ka mararating. Kasi it continuously evolves. Back then, when I graduated in 2005, I graduated ng high school 1998. Walang blockchain nun, no? walang social media nun, no? walang Friendster nga nun eh. No? So, pag hindi ka nag-evolve dyan, may na natihihig ka na lang. So going back, so I want to actually have my uh, more into finances roughly around 1 million for my savings para at least magtumanda na rin ako. O sakaling umama sa bato, mamatay ako, maaksidente ako, my family can actually you know, get something na kahit wala na ako. Kasi sila may iintindihin pa ako, wala na. Ano? And then, realistically, um, maybe, simula nung yung mga hindi pa nag-freelancer dyan, or sabihin natin, hindi pa nag-home base, once you try it, and then, kung masenso kayo dito, I'm telling you, mas mataas pa sweldo nyo kaysa sa mga boss nyo, yung mga eight-hour shift nyo, wala yan. I mean, I mean, hindi naman sa nila nagkaya. Diba kung mapalaki ng ulo? Or just actually, um, you know, providing you proof and, you know, to inspire. Katulad na ang ginagawa ng mga nagsasalita dito. Si Abe. Abe was actually the CEO and the owner of Yuga Tech. So, it's a tech blog. Top tech blog yan. So, paano ba siya nagsimula? Diba? Siya na rin ang nagsusulat ng kanya. Now, he also has writers already. Binabayaran na siya. Every time na nagpa-vlog siya, binibigyan siya ng gadgets and stuff and everything. Yan, si, si Fitz. Fitzvideofuerte.com Actually, kailangan na isang client ko. So, yeah, he's actually doing writing for, you know, ano lang, hobby. Back then. Na, ano lang siya, uh, dahil yun kasi siya, financial planning, uh, nagbibigay siya ng advice, nagsusulat siya, now he's actually earning. Mas malaki pa doon sa mga ina-advisan niya, minsan yung kailang kinikita. Kasi marami siya kliyante na. So it's the same thing. For me, yun. And then you can be able to travel the world. Um, yun. Actually, last year, I have my client. Siya yung nagpabiyahay sa akin going to Vietnam. So all expense paid. Right now, by December, I'll be going to Singapore to have a partnership with you know, some exchange right there and either ICO startups. Kasi yun nga yung ginawa ko co-founder ng isang client ko. So, I'm representing the co-foundership for, for Asia. So, yun. yun yung, so, sila na gumagastos lahat and everything. So, yun yung isang big perks paging freelancer. And then, pag natapos mo na siya, since you're using Buffer, you're using Crowdfire, you're using, you know, Asana, Trello, uh, my, my, uh, Basecamp, you're using, uh, let's say, Bootsuit or whatsoever, any automation devices. Pwede yung pagkaseta po lang, tapos ka na, matulog ka na, wala nang problema, wala nang pakailang client mo dun eh. Kahit sabihin nyo, pagkasundoan nyo, dalawang oras araw-araw, apat na oras araw, full day kayo magtrabaho, basta na set up na, automatic nang lalabas nyo, di matulog ka na. Gumala ka na sa ang pamilya mo, di bayad ka for the whole day. Oh, so let's say, um, yung ano mo, rate mo, like ako kasi rate ko is like $25 per hour lang eh. So let's say rate mo is, yun natin, $5 per hour, $6 per hour. So, automatic na yun. The whole day. Uh, natutulog ka na, humikita ka, buhayan ka. So, it's something like that. Hindi mo dinadaya yung kliyente mo kasi you're actually providing a good service already. And you're doing the same thing over and over again as long as it's working for them. You don't need to change it. But it's not working. You check the analytics. You change. You formulate. And then once it's working, you do it. Stuck ka lang dyan. Karek-karekyo na yun. So, that's for me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yung last na sinabi nga, ano, na ang maganda sa freelancing, most of the time, you are being paid for the output okay. sa really the time. Yeah. Ang empleyado, uh, usually they are being paid for the time rendered. Kaya nga, may timing and time out. Pero, that's the beauty of being a freelancer. Uh, you are being paid for the output that you produce, which means the more output that you can produce, the more income that you will get. As an employee, kahit na pumetics ka lang sa opisina buong araw, you will still get paid because you were there for a certain time. So, that's the basic difference. And, uh, uh, congrats sir na you are focusing on paper investments right now, di ba? Thank you! <laughs> Akala ko ang goal nyo from 6, gagawin 7 figures a month. Um, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm going, going forward na ako dun eh. Alright, so maganda rin yun, no? meron kang income target, no? uh, you constantly challenge yourself and uh, 
Na curious ako doon sa client mga kilala ko. Si John na ba yan? No. <laughs> ano siya? Foreigner. Ah, foreigner. From... Katagay uh, siya ngayon sa Vietnam. Uh, Stephen. No. Ah, okay. Chris. Okay. Ah, okay. Sige. Uh, Gulat ako. Pero ano yan? Uh, hindi ko na siya client ngayon. Ah, hindi na ngayon. Alright, so... One last one. One last one. Si, uh, si Sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if... You have question. Come on, my dear. Ah, good afternoon, everyone. Ah, uh, my name is Hernan. Ah, uh, I'm actually a graduating student. Uh, I I will graduate next year, March 2019. And this kind of gathering ah uh, helped me to decide what will be what will be my ah uh, path after I graduate in university as uh, being surrounded by a uh, you know a uh, traditional uh, way of studying in college or earning your bachelor's degree uh, this kind of gathering helped me to decide what will be my uh, so, so sir uh, ang goal ko po is uh, i would like to improve how to effectively reach the network which is the millennials so, uh, so uh, like for example nowadays uh, Uh, social media uh, are being rampant uh, to those young people out there, and I would like to improve my skills uh, in uh, that kind of you know path. And how can I reach uh, achieve my goal? Uh, as uh, Mr. Villa Fuerte uh, mentioned, the top 20 uh, top 20 skills that I would like to you know. Um, Uh, to earn or to achieve, uh, I can reach my goal by uh, studying these uh, basic skills that he mentioned, and also earn certificates for me to back back it up, back it up the potential in me, so that in that way I can also inspire my fellow youth. And yun nga po, yun kasi nga po, de ba? Uh, yung social media is napakalaganap na dito sa atin. Kaya maputi talaga na ma-improve yung skills uh, in social media. Yun lang po. Sorry po. Ay, na, so anong course mo ngayon ng college? Uh, bachelor of Arts major in English po. Under the College of Pizarro. Uh, Alright. So, may nakuha kang idea o anong career pa kang pupuntahan mo next year when you graduate? Alright, so you want to go to social media? Ha? Huh? Freelancing. Freelancing sa social media. Okay, uh, sige. Good luck on that. So, thank you. Alright. Alright, yeah. Pwede siyang content strategies, di ba? One of the fastest rising. Ano. So, pwede yun. Uh, so, thank you to sa kapto nag-share dito. And, paano ba? What do we do now? If you have any questions, guys, so now is the time. You those three and one of your just approach Joanna. So uh, Joanna right there, and she'll get her details. But now we'll use the remaining time for questions for Fitz uh, about freelancing in general, about the about the things that Fitz discussed earlier on. So if you have any questions, just raise your hands. All right. Um, Uh, yes, because <laughs> I've, I've done that. Yeah. Um, important thing is you know what you're going to do. Uh, karamihan ng kilala ko who went to freelancing, they have a short, uh, short attention span. Because if you start finding opportunities online, uh, babahalin ka, no? Sa, I know a friend, may nakita maganda opportunity. Pupursun niya, 2-3 weeks in, may marinig na bago opportunity, titignan, nandidistract. So, after a few months, 
iba na yung ginagawa. So with online, you have to decide and commit on what you will pursue. And ang kagandahan, when putting up an online business, uh, you just have to be a little patient, but the usual third, uh, ROI, you'll achieve it in six to nine months. Merong ng significant result, no? So, for example, you want to go to blogging, right? so it's not as popular as yung ginagawa ng mga freelancers, but freelancers is still a viable source of income. You would have to do it for uh, six to eight months before you feel uh, the, the income, no? If you want to put up a dropshipping business, katulad si sir, I know someone who really focused on building the dropshipping business, and mga four or five months before niya naramdaman niya ng baso. No? So, whatever you want to pursue, make sure that you have, you are committed. Ito yung gagawin ko, hindi ako makapag-distract sa mga ibang mga makikita ko online, no? So, and uh, yes, it is possible. Uh, depende kasi kung ano yung ano, yung, I don't know your skills and your resources, no? Pero, personally, I've done that. Zero cash out, then an online business. O, oh, lalo na online, no? Ano, laway lang ang puhunan mo. Hindi yung mga <laughs> kilala ko. Um, sabi niya, yung friend ko kasi, ano siya, safety officers is a plan. Ah, okay. So sabi niya, gusto ko din ginagawa mo online, kaya kaya. So sabi ko, anong, ano, anong pwede mong gawin, no? Or ituro, or, I will say, ako, ikaw, ano ba pwede ituro mo as a safety officer is a plan? So sabi niya, well, pwede ako mag, mag-set up ng mga general guidelines for safety at work. Sabi ko, sulat mo. So sinulat niya, o oh, e-book convert natin ang e-book upload natin tapos sa Amazon libre na naman mag-upload ng e-book sa Amazon ayan market mo na ngayon may market niya kumikita siya uh, until now mga 40 to 50 dollars a month wala siyang cash out doon o oras lang sinulat niya yung e-book it's a 60 page e-book on uh, safety at work <coughs> Yeah, so that's just one example of the many super many things that you can do online to put up a business. Ngayon may e-book business na siya. Related lahat ng mga e-books na lahat naka-upload sa Amazon as an e-book. So that's just one round. Alright? Uh, okay ba? Yeah, I just have a follow-up. Because uh, I have been uh, hearing yung dropshipping. Yes. Uh, huh? Right? What is dropshipping? Uh, you must be selling. Yun. Kasi ito yan, kunwari mag, meron akong online store. Uh, nagbibenta ako ng mga relos. Yung favorite kong mga friends ko eh, relos. Uh, meron mo order, pero yung order na yon hindi ko talaga hawak yun. Wala akong inventory. Tatawagan ko yung supplier ko, ay may kumulter sa akin ito, pakideliver sa kanya. So, tinilipa siya kanya. Uh, so, middleman ako. Yeah. You to buy? No. 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 You, or, you only order when someone orders. Kaya siya naging lucrative kasi drop cheaper yung tawag sa akin na ano, uh, meron, meron akong supplier na binibenta ko yung mga produkto nila for them. So, I, they only... Uh, reseller, yeah. Basically, reseller. Na, kasi pag reselling assumption, binibili mo na eh, di ba? Kasi may buy ko so. Ako, ayaw. Yan ay isang microenterprise. Uh -huh. So, yung sa binata niyo, mga Oh, uh, Alibaba. Yeah, AliExpress. Yeah. Uh, AliExpress. Uh, what I'm saying is your platform. May nagka-drop shipping ba dito? Uh, yung friend ko kasi, gumawa ng, ng account sa Shopify. Tapos, meron siyang platform or software na install. Uh, I forgot. O Oberlo? Oberlo. Oberlo. Yun. Yung Oberlo, 
yung platform na yun, yung Shopify store mo, pupunta siya sa AliExpress or sa Alibaba, hahanap siya ng produkto, kukunin niya, ilalagay niya doon sa Shopify store mo. Pag may pumili doon sa Shopify store mo, inonotify ka na kailangan mong order yung itong produkto na to doon sa supplier sa Alibaba. Tapos sila na rin yung magsiship doon sa orders nila. So that's dropshipping. So para kang, yun na, uh, nagiging middleman. I, yeah, I, I, do, I don't want to really use reseller kasi a lot of dropshippers, kasi pag reselling nga, you're, binili mo muna, di ba? Tapos binata mo. Hindi eh. Yung bibili mo lang siya pag may umorder na sa'yo. So, uh, there's actually a whole course online na you can search how to do dropshipping. I actually discussed that, di ba? Parang mga two or three months ago in a PayPal freelancer yung how to do dropshipping. Yeah, last time. So, um, yun, uh, you can try that. That's also uh, low capital business. Yun. All right. So, yeah. Any questions? Any other questions? I uh, see Jer Jermaine. Jermaine. Sorry, I didn't want to. Yes, sir. So, uh, sir, I know. Um, you mentioned Kadena that you started with software. Yes. Uh, and then, obviously, right now, uh, you're more into finance. Yes. So, uh, two prong questions. Uh, first is, what made you decide to shift uh, from the software part to be a financial planner? And secondly, as a financial planner, alam naman natin ngayon na, di ba, parang, it's not financial planning. Hindi pa siya ganun ka prevalent dito, even sure. though it's gaining ground. So it's not like in other like Western countries, for example. So uh, the question is, how do you? Um, parang, can you give some tips on how you introduce it to potential clients? Because mostly yung ay hindi naman financial. Yeah. Hindi pa siya. Uh, hindi pa ganun kalakas ang financial education dito. So parang getting someone to manage your finances. See, would seem like an alien concept for most Filipinos. So how can you actually sell it na parang you're there, um, you have certi certified yourself, you have studied for it, and parang they can actually benefit from your expertise. Okay. Uh, yung sa question mo, uh, the easiest answer to is I usually follow the money. Okay? So what, does, what do I mean? What does it mean? So I... I really set my sights on an engineering career when I was young. Kaya na civil engineering ako. So when I was already working as a civil engineer, I have a friend na graduate ng Comsai, medyo kabarkada ko, who is earning more than, times two, uh, more than me, no? twice more than me. So sabi ko, mukhang mali yung course ko na civil engineering. Gusto ko mag-shift to IT. <laughs> But instead of getting another degree, I I told myself, what's his self study at home? So, just tell my friend, ko, na, do you think it's a good way to to uh, be a freelance software developer or program? So I you can try. So that's what I did. I self study at home, DB, SQL, etc. I was I contacted all my Comsai uh, friends, outsourced them to me for a project. Uh, software development. And when my income was already equal to my salary, my freelance income was equal to my salary, that's when I decided that to resign from being a civil engineer, pursue IT, pursue freelance programming. Diba? So the inspiration of there was I want to earn more money. However, the problem is, as a programmer, one man team, lagi akong pagod. <laughs> Kasi programming. So I need another way, another source of income. So what I did was, kailangan ko mag-negosyo and kung nakasarap ako ng computer every day, the automatic business that would come to mind during that time was put up a computer shop. So that put up ako ng counteran. I don't know if you know that term. Counteran talaga. As in, lalo ka ng counter-strike. So, yung mga bata naglalaro ng counter-strike, ako nandun sa sa counter, doon sa parang cashier, nagpo-program ako, kumagawa ako ng program doon. And sabi ko, nung kumikita na yung negosyo ko sa yung computer shop ko, sabi ko, mas masarap kumita din ko sa computer shop kesa doon sa ginagawa kong programming. Kasi dito, 
Ano yun, nak- naglalaro ako, binamanage ko na yung mga bata, uh, pero kumikita ako ng malaki as compared sa program na tuyo lagi yung utak ko. So that really got me into entrepreneurship. So, uh, from a computer shop, I, I eventually scaled up yung katabing dentista ko noon sa counteran. Nagpunta ng Canada, nabakante, kinuha ko. Bakit? Kasi, pauso na nun ang Ragnarok at saka Dota. So, na-expand ako. From, from 12 computers, umabot ako ng 24 computers kasi dalawang unit na yung sa akin eh. So, yung kapila, Fountera, yung kapila, Dotahan. So, after 2007, a lot of my friends, mga college batchmates ko, who are successful engineers already, sabi sa akin, ano lang ginagawa mo? Well, tambay sa kanto, o pustahan ng Dota, o tuwing gabi. Kasi yun naman talagang ginagawa ko. And that inspired me na, alam mo, yung experience ko on how I shifted from being a uh, employee, to a freelancer, to an entrepreneur, I get a lot of questions from all my friends how I did it, anong nangyari sa akin. Uh, kaya sabi ko, kung laute graduate ka ng engineering, tapos ngayon, nagninegosyo ka, nagtalaro ka lang ng Dota, gabi-gabi, di ba? So, sabi ko, kahit na, instead of me, uulit-ulitin ko yung kwento ko, I just put up my blog. Yun yung personal finance blog. Which is, at first, it was really me, an online diary, telling people how I did it because I don't like telling the story over and over again to all my friends. Mm. So 2007 yun, and during that time, I was very lucky because I was a pioneer for blogging on the personal finance space. During the time, si Abe was already blogging about tech. So mga dati, food blog, tech blog, travel blog, mommy blog, yun yun. Walang personal finance blog, walang business blog. So I was a pioneer in that space and bakit ako naging register financial planner? Again, a lot of people got inspired sa story ko and asked, started asking me for advice. And one of the things that I realized is regardless kung anong ginagawa mo, even if you're an employee or a freelancer or an entrepreneur, if you don't know how to manage your money, you will not be rich. You will not be able to um, Build your wealth. So it's important to learn about personal finance. However, people are all asking me for personal finance advice. I'm not making money out of it because it's not ethical for me to ask for for money to, when I give my advice because I'm not a certified anything. Right? So that's when I decided to become a registered financial planner. I got a certification from the RFP Institute, um, which is uh, recognized by the uh, financial Planners Association of America, etc. So, nung nakuha ko yung title ko ng RFP, legal na akong maningilin doon sa mga tao na nag-aasa ng advice. Kaya, take advantage yung ngayon na libre ko kayo binibigyan ng advice. Kasi, pag sa ibang lugar, sisigilin ko kayo. So, again, it's really following the money kasi you know what? I get around 10 to 15 personal finance questions every day. Diba? So, I I... I realized that there is a market to this. So again, following the money, my opportunity, pioneer, I can set the the price. Uh, I can set the market trend. And it is, it is uh, what's been happening now. Marami ng personal finance blogs ngayon, di ba? Pero, it's not really hard to, to get clients because Primarily a target market ko high net worth. Katulad si, si Sir, si Sir Mark, no? Sabi niya, ang dami nung kinikita niya, hindi niya na alam kung saan nilalagay, di ba? Ito, ito ang target market ko. Kasi marami ko naman. Kasi hindi, kaya nga ako nagtanong na libre sa iyo eh. Oo. Oh, That's oh. my singer. Tama. So, yun yung target market ko. Uh, there are a lot of high net worth clients na they are earning good, particularly yung mga doktor. Ang lalaki yung kumikita, pero... Ano na nangyayari? Hindi na lang anong gagawin nila sa pera, so napapabili ng insurance, ng kung ano-anong kondo, etc. Wala financial plan. So I tell them na, there's an alternative, di ba? Ikaw, ayaw mo yung mga pasyente mo na kukontot sa mga konstitusi ng albularyo, etc. Kasi meron kang, di ba, meron kang ano eh, uh, uh, treatment plan para sa kaila. So ako, ako rin, ayaw ko rin na ikaw, 
kuha ka ng kuha ng kuha ng anong investment kung kanina-kanina pero wala ka namang financial plan. So yun. So, knowing your target market uh, really helps in knowing how you will market and where to look for clients. Kailangan kilala mo yung ano mo, yung kliyente mo. May kilala kong, meron akong uh, na-meet na social media manager, target market niya, restaurants. Gusto niya nagmamanage siya ng Facebook pages ng restaurants, pero hindi lang restaurants. Si Nix ba yan? Hindi naman. <laughs> well, kakilala niya si Nix. Pero siya, gusto niya yung mga Japanese ramen restaurants. So yun talaga. So sa kapag ilang ngayon ang kliyente mo, anim. Wow, anim. Oo, oh, kaya every week, I get to eat ramen for free. Kung, kung nasaan man ako. Kasi syempre, di ba sa social media manager, pupunta sa doon sa branch na kailangan kong mag-take ng pictures ng mga pagkain nyo para sa Instagram and all. So, pakain ninyo. <laughs> Oo. Hindi kasi, favorite niya rin talaga mag-ramen. Alam mo yun? And, of course, nasa contract naman. Hindi naman yung kakapal na mukha na pakain ninyo ako. Nasa contract naman talaga na I will visit once a week to take pictures ng food, ganyan, ganyan. And for personal consumption, I will usually, pag pupunta siya, may kasama siya isang food lover, pinapakain na rin niya ng libre kasi Part of the social media, the content strategy, meron write up yung food blogger sa blog niya, nakakain ng libre, may picture siya, pwede magamit sa Instagram and Facebook. Pero yun nga, sabi niya, dream come true, parang gusto na gusto ko sa ramen, kasi favorite na yun. Pero kasi yun nga, alam mo yun, focus. Ngayon, online, there's so many things that you can do, the best way to succeed is really to focus on one goal, no? One client, one type of target market, one income source. Tapos, once you have automated that, you can move to the next goal, no? Ganun siya. Uh, serial entrepreneurship. Uh, if you attend Ginger, can tell me kay Ginger? Next Saturday, no? I think so, yeah. I, I've been in Cebu during that time, so I won't be able to attend, sorry. But Ginger has been a good friend of mine. We've been friends since 2008, and We often tell ourselves that we are both serial entrepreneurs. So, pag tinanong kami, ano bang business mo? Usually, my answer is, ano ba, online or offline? Because I have several. It's the same for Ginger. And one of the things that people ask us, paano mo ginawa? Yan ang dami mong negosyo. The answer is, we did it one business at a time. So, nag-start ka ng isang business, pag successful na, you start another one. Hindi mo gagawin niya sabay-sabay. Si Ginger will be able to talk to you more about serial entrepreneurship kasi grabe si Ginger. Mas atik sa akin yung magtayo ng business. Every year meron siyang bago. And right now, ano ba yung, ano yung taksu mo? No? Yeah. Yeah, yun yung pinagkakapala niya. So, uh, saan ba yung kay Ginger? Dito rin. Ayun, next Saturday. So, uh, uh, I know you will learn a lot. Yun ba yung ano niya? Topic niya? Ah, oh, yung how to be a legitimate freelancer for 2019. All right. Okay. So, I hope we have to learn kayo. One of the, a lot of, the, a lot of times people ask me, kailangan ba magaling ako magsulat para maging vlogger? Sabi ko, hindi. You don't have to have perfect grammar. Kailangan na madadal ka. And I'm sure na pansin nyo madadal ako. Kailangan mahilig ka magkwento. That's the best uh, criteria for being a vlogger. No? So, you don't have to have perfect English. Balitan niyo yung mga 2007 articles ko sa vlog ko. Nakakadili yung English ko. Hindi <laughs> edit ko na lang kasi sabi ko, wala na ko makakaalam na in-edit ko siya. So ngayon, better na yung drama. Drama rin. Kasi papasin niyo, nakalagay doon, published 2000. 2009, tapos last edited 2018. Alam mo, may pinago ako doon. May pinago ako doon sa article na usually, yeah, grammar, ang pangit nung, nung sentence structure ko, pinapakita ko. Okay lang. Kaya, kung nagsisimula ka, okay lang na hindi pa kayo perfect mag-grammar or hindi kayo magaling mag-English na lang. Basta isulat yun lang, isulat kasi eventually you will improve. Yun. Okay, so yun nga, no? kailangan madalaga yung gusto niya mag-blogger and yung mga video vloggers ngayon, papansin nyo, di ba? Talking heads lang. Oh, Kasalita lang. Tapos, ilang million na views, si Lord Cadena, 200,000 pesos a month. Ano bang ginagawa? Nagpapagawa sa camera. Kasi madadal siya, di ba? Yung advantage. Anyway, yun. So, 
Okay na? So thank you everyone for this. If you have more questions, hanapin nila yung pangalan ko sa Facebook. No? So Fitz, we love her. Fitz Gerard, actually, yung totoo ko pangalan. Ang important siya, huwag yung lalagyan ng R. Pag ako may message nyo ng Fritz, hindi ko kayo papansinin, ha? Believe it or not, siguro mga 3 out of 10 people who would message me, Fritz ang tawag sa akin. Si Simpson ko kayo, sorry. So Fitz, no? Message nyo ako sa Facebook or uh, message nyo ako sa Twitter. If you have additional questions, uh, if you want a copy of my presentation, yes. yun, message nyo ako para isi-send ko sa inyo, okay? So ngayon, we will have a group photo.